DC Studios is planning to test actresses soon to star in Supergirl, and that is Millie Alcock, Amelia Jones, and Meg Donnelly are in the mix. There is a chance the studio could make a straight offer to a star, but all things are pointing towards screen tests for the actresses, which will go down within the next month or so. DC Studios co-boss James Gunn is definitely part of the process, and that this is a character who likely will make its debut via a cameo in a DC project that isn't Supergirl. The search is ongoing for a director. Alcock is best known for her role on HBO's Game of Thrones spin-off House of Dragon playing Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, and I don't think I said that correctly. Jones counts future credits such as Paolo Sorrentino's Youth and Apple's Oscar Best Picture winner Coda, as well as Netflix series Lock and Key. Donnelly has starred in Disney Channel's zombie franchise and is already the voice of Supergirl in DC animated movies, Legion of Superheroes, and Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1. Gunn, with his co-DC chief, Peter Safran, first announced a Supergirl movie, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, during DC Studio Press Day just more than a year ago. The movie is based on Tom King's comic book series from 2022. Gunn said at the time, quote, In our series, we see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from time he was an infant, versus Supergirl, who was raised on a rock, a chip off Krypton, and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life, and then came to Earth where she was a young girl. She's much more hardcore. She's not exactly the Supergirl we're used to seeing. Superman Legacy, meanwhile, is prepping up the shoot this spring in Georgia with David Cornsweet, Rachel Brosnahan, Nicholas Holt, Skylar Gisondo, Sarah Sampal, with Anthony Kerrigan, Isabella Merced, and Nathan Fillion playing Metamorpho, Hot Girl, and Guy Gardner, Green Lantern. Now, just to be up in front, I haven't seen anything that either one of these ladies have been in. Uh, I keep putting House of Dragon on my watch list, and I just keep pushing it back. But... One of these three ladies may be our future Supergirl. And I feel so sorry for Sasha Kali. But if we were to choose one based on who I assume has the look of Supergirl, I would lean towards Donnelly, then Jones, and then finally Alcock. But Donnelly is the one with the least impressive resume. Alcock has appeared in numerous highly rated TV shows such as House of the Dragon, but also Pine Gap, which I doubt she had a big role in it. But, you know, it's very good for the resume. But she's also has been in comedies as well with her Aussie show Upright, which has good reviews. Jones has just done a highly rated movie Coda and is working on another movie coming out soon called Winner, which is about reality winner and the Russian interference of 2016. So if that movie becomes a huge success, you know, she'll be a real big catch for DC as this big up and coming star. But then we come to Donnelly, who has the least impressive resume, um, if you compare her to Jones or Alcock, going from Disney Channel to CW, but she is the voice of Supergirl right now. Which I would lean towards that's good for her favor, but at the same time, it's also Elseworlds, and that doesn't mean Jack anymore. But if I was going to be basing it on looks, I would lean towards Donnelly, but if we're going to go by resume, I would probably say Jones may get it. But back to the story of this future movie and this form of Supergirl that they're working on. Uh, I read Woman of Tomorrow. And it's good, but bleak. You know, I'm interested in what kind of Supergirl Tom King and James Gunn are going to make. If you haven't read the Supergirl comic, the premise is instead of slipping into the Phantom Zone, Supergirl grows up in Argo City where everyone is dying from kryptonite poisoning. And this... You know, it all takes place post-destruction of Krypton. But while being poisoned by Kryptonite, they come up with a solution to stop the poisoning. And then meteorites or asteroids, I can't remember which is what they're called, uh, destroy their solution and people go back to slowly dying again. And Supergirl, throughout all of this, is spending her days driving nails or digging graves. So Supergirl grows up with death being a constant. And her lack of care for when people die comes across a little disingenuous. And it's not her fault. You know, she views it as that, you know, we all die and she's seen enough death not to be affected by it anymore. So I'm guessing her relationship with Clark, Superman, will be him trying to bring her back to humanity while she has this jaded, lackadaisical personality to the suffering of man or, or to fighting criminals. So Clark has to teach her to grow relationships and care for people who are in her life. Now, in Woman of Tomorrow, 
she does go in a pursuit of justice along with her companion because these people killed her companion's family. But it was mainly out of getting retribution for Crypto, who they shot, I believe, and getting back her stolen vehicle. So, it, you know, it's basically John Wick with a friend. But, I mean, by the end, she has slowly turned back into who you want to see while having a dark streak in her. And, and to explain, you know, here's the end of the comic. But it's all interesting to see the reconstruction of certain characters for story's sake. You know, doing it to just do it with no real world consequences, you know, it's a little boring. But if this is the character that they're going to work off of, then she'll have probably a more tragic backstory and past than I think anyone in comic book movie history except maybe the Punisher. But outside of all that, you guys have a good one. Bye.